Hi everybody. Um, I was basically approached by my daughter while we were busy doing a, a client's job um, how to create a look like this where we had uh, two letters of the alphabet that overlapped each other but created a I don't know if you call this a negative space but a, a cutout space here. Now you, you could do things where you use masks and so forth um, but for purposes of this cutout look and feel where it had to be transparent in the background we needed to have the actual one object cutting the other object but there needed to be an an equal offset and if any of you have watched the uh, previous video that I did about um, offset tool which I've got in inverted commas which is a, a workaround in uh, affinity designer because they don't have a offset tool at, at the moment I'm sure it will be released in the next uh, couple of updates that they have but I use that specific principle to do exactly this now uh, you might be tempted to go and just um, take this one S put it on top of the B cut it out and then shift the S uh, you know with the shift keys and move it or resize it and, and think you're going to get the same result but let's let's go down that road and, and see what we can come up with so I'm going to just clear off everything off this artboard and we are going to do exactly that I'm going to choose a B and we're going to choose the letter S and a, a quick way of because I've got these two letters that are actually next to each other it's, it's like me typing out letters uh, I can convert them to curves a quick shortcut key is pressing control hold it down and press enter that would convert them to curves but they'll still be in a group so you've got to right click and ungroup them and if we look here on the artboard side we see there's the two converted into curves basically okay um, you could go through the menu items and do them but I think those are nice quick cut keys to learn so I'm going to select the S and just make sure the foreground is there maybe choose red uh, both of these objects have zero um, strokes around them okay the stroke is is like in the other video the stroke is actually used to create the offset uh, because when you have a stroke and you increase the thickness of the stroke the stroke actually evenly moves off the actual uh, structure that you're using in this case would be a letter S or the letter B and because it has an even offset when you're moving that stroke that's what we use to our advantage to create any sort of uh, workarounds with uh, offset uh, features that we're looking for but for now I'm going to just show you if we do what we think will work and we're going to go across this object here and I'm going to just create control J on this S so I can create a copy and then hide it then I am going to do a cutout so I'm going to select the S and the B so the S is going to be subtracting from the B because I'm going to go to this tool and here it shows that the object on top which is the gray minus will be subtracted from the bottom one in this case the S will be subtracted from the B and leave this cutout on the top area and this bottom area okay so normally people will go okay let's do the cutout here we go now we switch back on the S so now if we take the S and we move it a little bit to the side we can actually get a space but now we get space on the left but the top area is not so when we move that down now we're finding it blocking here so it's literally impossible to to move it exactly where you want to because of the uh, unevenness of the actual shape and where it's cutting the other object so I'm gonna go control Z now the other thing we could try is shift control and alt and do a proportionate resize to try and get the thing resized in that area but still we're gonna sit with this problem uh, we're going to try and readjust and, and it will never work because the object is disproportionate and it's also cutting into different areas so there's no ways you could you actually do a cutout and then resize and reshape and all that sort of things you, it's going to be a merry mess if you try that route only option is to use the offset tool which is the workaround thing that we're going to use and let me show you how that all comes into play um, oops I pressed the wrong key there let's just get right back to where we were okay 
I, I'm right back at that point. I've made the, the duplicate. We have the two. Um, what we've got to depend on here now, and if you're not familiar with it, watch that other video. It will make sense afterwards, but I, I'm going to cover a few areas that would kind of clarify um, for those who are just watching this video on its own. The whole key here is, is that we use the stroke on the particular object to create a offset area that we'll use and then what we will do is we'll separate that stroke because uh, with Affinity Design or most vector programs it doesn't use the stroke as part of the physical object um, to do um, sort of uh, manipulations uh, by that I mean if, if we had to take this object and subtract it from the, the B, the S from the B uh, it would cut it out exactly where the S is. If we had to add a stroke, let me just do this. I'm going to just make sure the stroke is a nice bright green color. If we add added a stroke like this and I subtracted this from the B here, it will only go where the red area, red area will go up until this line, this blue line. It will still only cut out to that area. It won't cut out to the edge of this green area okay um, because um, that's how the program treats um, strokes it's it's not a converted vector item it's a, a parametric item that is needing to be converted always uh, if you do adjustments on it so it's a kind of live editing item that that the uh, the program uses L let me show you I'm going to put a marker here so that we can see what I'm referencing the mark is going to be right on the edge of this green. Okay, so if we do this, we anticipate that we cut the S from the B, it should cut out right until the edge. But it, I'll just show you now that it actually only will cut out short of it in this area. Let me just do that. Here we go, and we do the cutout. Can you see it comes short of that area? So it doesn't use the outline here. So what we've got to do is use a special uh, feature called expand stroke I've gave, given it a shortcut e and what that does it separates the actual uh, contour the stroke on the object from the actual object and then we'll be sitting with two vector objects and in that way we can utilize the actual expansion of the stroke as part of our tools to create an even cutout over there just a, a key here you notice that the edges are smooth and not rounded and the actual object is quite sharp to make it more representative when you do the cutout you've got to go to the mitre and I usually put it on default 4 and you'll see how it sharpens at the edges there okay I've just done this very excessive to show the point the other thing that I just want to cover here is if if you had to choose a line stroke to inside it would take it and when you cut out over here on this area uh, or you convert the the outline stroke to um, uh, when you hit this button here and you convert it to uh, to expand that stroke it will have no additional effect because it will just this the red here actually goes right till the edge underneath this in any case so you'll have basically two areas that are overlapping each other on the S uh, if I go and I select it towards the out outside then I've just got to be conscious that I'm not going to make it so thick if I want to remove I probably will bring it down a bit because now the outside it goes from the edge of this object and it will be over there now this would look quite ideal in that we're going to convert these into two different uh, objects the outline into one and then the actual object itself so we'll cut out the object and we'll cut out the outline but I find in some cases there's almost an a artifact that occurs right at the edge of the two. So we're going to cut out the red area, we're going to cut out the green area uh, from the, the B in the background. But there's going to be a little artifact. So the best way I find to use this technique for this specific thing when we have letters that we are cutting out is to use it that it aligns it to the center. So when it cuts out, yes, the inside from the line, inside is going to duplicate cut out where the red is but that's not a problem but then at least it cuts out the whole area there is no discrepancy the only thing you've got to be aware of is that the setting here if you set this on eight it will be basically four points to the inside and four points to the outside 
so you basically only look at the outside points as the separation so once we cut out the the actual s out here it will end up on this blue line that we're seeing the curve line then if we use the green line now which we're going to separate the stroke and make it into a, a independent vector item if we use that to cut out from the b again then we'll basically have the space from the blue line to the edge of the green as the little separation but you can see it's perfect there um, and if we look here it will be a perfect space all around the object because the spacing is is actually directed by the actual object we are using here in this case is the s okay so let's get ahead with it if we look in a layers panel we've got our original s which is going to just stay in that place then we've got the s where we've got the outline it goes from the middle and now we want to separate this object from its stroke on the outside look what happens here in the layers palette i'm going to press e which is my my quick key that i've arranged that you can set up in the program yourself look what happens here press e there you can see that the actual border area now has actually separated and okay i'm going to just you move this marker away here interesting that you've noticed that as it separates it defines that that inside part is there if i move it can you see that it defines that the inside part is part of the actual object so it doesn't create a, a, a offset this way so you've basically utilized that for for the cutout purposes now i'm going to just hide that and there i have the actual offset over there if i switch it back on we see the green is going right across there okay so that whole green area is covering so the green will cut into this if i'm going to now subtract the the actual red area from the the black letter at the bottom it's going to cut to the edge of the red here and when i use the green to cut out it's going to doubly cut over this area there'll be nothing here but at least this this interface between the two if there was any artifact it will actually remove it when i do the the second uh, cut out so first we go for the s and the b let me just zoom out and i'm going to say subtract of course subtract the top one from the bottom one it's showing the gray minus on top from the bottom object which is the s from the b if i click there we have it exactly there now if i switch back on the s there it's perfectly cut out on that area but now i want to cut it out a little bit further i want to cut it further in that place so i now show you the s and you can see where the s will be effectively cutting out it will cut out from this area which is already cut out on the inside to a little bit on that side so from this little edge of the b area that's already cut out to where the green ends that's going to also be cut out and our red letter is only going to come up until this particular middle line here okay so when we go select that select the area and i'm going to go subtract again and when i switch on the s see what happens there there we've got it beautifully with that exact space and that space goes all the way around it basically goes around everything and it's equal all the way around because it's used the actual shape of this to do that particular cutout okay so hopefully that has been able to explain how you use the the offset tool here to actually create that cutout that even cutout for yourself as such Okay, and if things weren't too clear, go watch the other video. Uh, I go into a little bit more detail about creating the offset tool and, and which way we use it to create symmetrical objects, etc. But in this way now, you could actually create letters that overlap each other that have a little bit of a clearance there. And you don't have to worry. If, if you have to make any other adjustment, um, like you decide okay you want the space to be a bit bigger you can basically take this s and then start to tweak this again and create uh, another outline with this probably and you know expand it and still use the same principle if you choose to um, if you want to close that space currently one of the only things you could have a bit of a workaround with would be to 
flip your whoops no that's not what I intended um, is to basically change your color of your border to the same and you could possibly just increase the width and there you could sort of create a, a, a closer area so this is basically taking the object and making the the um, stroke area the same color and just closing it if you wanted to make that gap a little bit close if you felt it was a little bit too wide and you've already done your edit okay so I hope this helps you with uh, creating these kind of even smooth cutouts there using the if I can call it the quasi uh, offset tool the stroke expanding stroke offset tool whole scenario okay so share the good news with everyone else uh, that uh, affinity designer is the great tool that we know it is and hope you have a great day and god bless